Hello, my name is Kao Kalia Yang and I am the 2020 winner of the children's literature category for my debut picture book, A Map Into the World. What has it been like living through COVID-19 as a writer? First, I can't believe that it's nearly been a year. Second, I've been writing a lot and not necessarily for a bigger public, but there has been a lot of heaviness in the feeling of, of the world and writing is how I lift those feelings up. It is how I examine them and how I let them go away or linger as they need to. And so I've actually been writing. I've been looking feverishly for beauty in the world around me and the lives around me and the stories that are bound even in these times, perhaps particularly so. Hello from Corey Dorfeld, winner of the 2019 Minnesota Book Award in Children's Literature for my book, The Rabbit Listened. I want to congratulate and celebrate this year's finalists. Their books are a testament to the power of stories, family, history, and the threads that bind them all. Hi, I'm Brian Freeman, and my novel The Voice Inside won the 2019 Minnesota Book Award for Genre Fiction. I know we'd all prefer to be together in person tonight, but one advantage of virtual events is that it's made it possible to reach out to readers across the state. So whether you're in the Twin Cities, Duluth, Marshall, or Thief River Falls, or anywhere else in Minnesota, thanks for joining this year's ceremony. Hi, I'm Karen Babine, the 2020 winner in the memoir creative nonfiction category for All the Wild Hungers, A Season of Cooking and Cancer. Minnesota has such a magnificent tradition of nonfiction and this year's finalists add such richness to the stories in our state. In these pandemic days when connecting is tough, the page has such power to bring us closer together. I hope you enjoy these books as much as I have.
Hi, I'm Kate Allen, 2020 winner in the middle grade category for The Line Tender. I just wanted to say how grateful I am to the librarians and booksellers in Minnesota for continuing to adapt to the COVID environment. Thank you for going to great lengths to share books with the community, especially at a time when some of us are looking for escape, comfort, and knowledge. I dream of the days when we can linger in libraries and bookstores. Until then, I'm thinking of you and your families. Stay well. Hi, I'm Christopher P. Lehman, 2020 winner in the Emily Buckwald Award for Minnesota Nonfiction for Slavery's Reach, Southern Slaveholders in the North Star State. Congratulations to all the finalists. Thank you for giving us excellent books this year to help us learn more about ourselves and our state. In the wake of George Floyd's killing, it's been especially important for us to be reflective of who we are as Minnesotans, and good literature helps us to do that. So, thank you. Hello, I'm Shula O'Connor, and I was the winner of the Minnesota Book Award for the novel and short story category in 2020 for my novel in Fragments, Facts, and Fiction, Evidence of V, published by Rose Metal Press. Congratulations to all the finalists. Thank you for the books you've given us, and thank you for changing us and challenging us with your powerful words. Hi, I'm Sue Wong, the 2020 Minnesota Book Award winner in the poetry category for Bodega, published with Milkweed Editions. I just wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate the four amazing finalists for this year's Minnesota Book Awards. Former classmate and dear friend, Roy Ju Guzman, my former professor at the U and poetry mentor, Ray Gonzalez, poetry icon, Denez Smith, and fellow pressmate, Torin A. Greathouse. Many congratulations to these four incredible poets. As a writer and reader, I'm so grateful for your powerful work. Hi, I am Naomi Kritzer, 2020 winner in the Young Adult category for Catfishing on Catnet. Being nominated for the Minnesota Book Award last year was both a huge honor and a huge thrill, and I would like to congratulate all of this year's finalists. Hi everyone, it's Shannon Gibney. I uh, was lucky enough to be a winner in the 2019 Minnesota Book Awards in the category of um, YA literature. Um, missing everybody again this year. I love the Minnesota Book Awards ceremony and the opportunity to connect with everybody. Um, but I'm so proud of all the finalists and our Minnesota writing community. And it's just gonna be so great to be back in person um, 
hopefully in 2022. But congratulations to everyone and see you soon. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Bonjour. Welcome to the 33rd annual Minnesota Book Awards Ceremony. Presented by Education Minnesota. The Minnesota Book Awards is a program of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library. As the Library of Congress designated Minnesota Center for the Book. Tonight's virtual celebration brings together readers and writers from all over the state. This event is a culmination of the year-long Book Awards program. Thank you to all the organizations and individuals who have made this possible. Thank you, Education Minnesota. Thank you to SPNN. Thank you, friends. There were 224 submissions for this year's program. Tonight, you'll see awards presented live in nine categories. And a brief tribute to the K. Sexton honoree. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So excited. So excited. I'm so excited to be here as a finalist. This is my first time. This is my second time. Third time. Fourth time. Eighth time. This is my first time as a finalist for the Minnesota Book Awards. Now more than ever. Now more than ever. Now more than ever. We're excited to be in a community with you. To share our stories. And to share the stories of our neighbors. Thank you, fellow writers. Thank you, fellow readers. Thank you, Minnesota. Thank you, Minnesota. Thank you, Minnesota. Thank you. 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 Good evening. Thank you to this year's finalists for that rousing start to the 33rd annual Minnesota Book Awards. I'm Elaine Hopkins, Director of Programs and Services for the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library, and I'd like to add my welcome to you all for being a part of tonight's celebration in honor of Minnesota's writers. I'd also like to thank all the previous winners who shared their messages during the preface, sponsored by Alaris and BrainFuse. It's wonderful to have your voices as a part of tonight's celebration. We will be announcing awards tonight to authors in nine categories with the help of guest MCs from around the state. And now that we've all been at this for over a year, we're even going to Zoom with the winners to get their immediate reactions. We'll also be celebrating the previously announced Kay Sexton Award winner. Make sure to follow and tag us on social media. We want to hear your comments about the evening, the books, the authors. Send us pictures if you've decided to dress up for the occasion. We're glad you're with us. As we get started this evening, we would like to acknowledge the Dakota people, indigenous keepers of the land from which we broadcast tonight. This land was reserved by the Dakota in the Treaty of Traverse de Sioux signed with the United States in 1851, and it remains sacred to them today. I also want to acknowledge the Ojibwe people, fellow indigenous inhabitants of this land. Dakota and Ojibwe people are also the original stewards of stories in this place now called Minnesota. And we at the Friends honor that tradition and the knowledge and values embedded in it as we work to lift up storytellers in our state today. We'd like to now recognize the support provided by our presenting sponsor, Education Minnesota, the state's educators union, representing 89,000 professionals working together for excellence in education for all students. Speaking to Education Minnesota's commitment to learning and literature is President Denise Speck.
Thank you for that introduction. As you heard, my name is Denise Speck and I am president of Education Minnesota. I'm also an elementary teacher on leave from the Centennial School District. I welcome this chance to say how proud educators are to sponsor the Minnesota Book Awards again this year. Education Minnesota is the labor union of educators all over this state from preschool through college. As educators, we're dedicated to building lifelong learners who will become active and informed members of our society after graduation. We don't always succeed, of course, but we often do inspire the habits of mind that bring people into libraries, bookstores, and even online celebrations of the written word. As I'm recording this, it has been more than a year since the pandemic struck. It forced us all to give up things we cherished to keep one another safe. For me, one of those was wandering up around into a bookstore, browsing the children's department for an hour. You see, I have been a teacher much longer than I have been a union leader. Most of my time in the classroom was with students in elementary school. You know, the littles, as educators call them. They're just starting to read, but still love to be read too. During my first years in the classroom, it was a struggle to find children's books with characters that looked like my students. The books were all white, my students were not. Which is why I am so proud of the Minnesota Book Awards for lifting up authors and stories that will inspire all students, white, black and brown, indigenous newcomer, and Asian and Pacific Islander. For our young readers, there are finalists this year telling stories of immigration from Laos, African-American history, the bombing of Nagasaki through the eyes of survivors, and the tension of not quite fitting into a country where you were born or the country of your grandfather. These are the stories we need today, stories that help Minnesota students, students understand themselves and stories that build connections across the divides of race, place, and religion. I am sure we all hope our students carry those stories and lessons they learned from them all the rest of their lives, especially now. So from all of us at Education Minnesota and all the littles across the state, thank you authors. Thank you Minnesota Book Awards for all that you do for readers everywhere. Thank you so much, Denise. We're so appreciative of the work you do with Education Minnesota and for this partnership. This has been an extraordinary year in so many ways. Extraordinary in its trauma and extraordinary in its creativity. For so many, this has also been a year of profound loss. The literary community of Minnesota has lost several bright lights and creators this year, and we'd like to take a moment to remember them tonight. Carol Connolly, St. Paul's Poet Laureate and a beloved fixture of the community. Joan Drury, an author, bookseller, and publisher. Mary Gardner, a writer, teacher, and mentor. Scott King, writer and founder of Red Dragonfly Press. And Sue Lorenzi Sojourner, an author and civil rights activist. In this year, we've also been able to find refuge in how the spoken and written word can provide escape, inspiration, and hope. We're extremely grateful to all who have channeled their time, energy, and talents into creating, producing, and sharing the work we honor tonight. We're also grateful to all of the sponsors and individuals who make this celebration possible, including additional program sponsors, Minnesota Humanities Center, and Supply Chain Solutions. It's great to be able to announce that we have the musical trio, the Willie August Project, back live here in the studio, and band leader Ben Seams has crafted original and customized music for each winning title. Our bookseller partner, Red Balloon, is ready to help you enjoy the work of all tonight's finalists. So visit their Book Awards page and stock up. Use the code MNBA21. We'll put the link in the chat throughout the evening. So let's get started. 
We'll begin at the very beginning with the award for children's literature, sponsored by Books for Africa and presented by Rose Oyamat, a children's specialist at the St. Paul Public Library. Hi, my name is Rose Oyamat, and I'm a children's specialist from St. Paul. I am so pleased to be here with you this evening to present the finalists for the children's literature category, sponsored by Books for Africa. Being a children's specialist, I love sharing children's literature that represents diverse cultures and experiences, where readers and listeners can see themselves and see into the lives of those outside their own. This year's finalist for children's literature encompasses that plus shows how interconnected we all are. With stunning artwork and stories that spark conversation, each book delves deep into your heart, long after the last page is turned. The finalists for children's literature are Be Love Can Be Hard by Alan Page and Cammy Page, illustrated by David Geister, published by the Page Education Foundation. Big Papa and the Time Machine by Daniel Bernstrom, illustrated by Shane Evans, published by HarperCollins Publishers. A Bowl Full of Peace, a true story by Karen Stelson, illustrated by Akira Kusaka, published by Carol Rhoda Books, Learner Publishing Group. And The Most Beautiful Thing by Kao Kalia Yang, illustrated by Kwa Le, published by Carol Rhoda Books, Learner Publishing Group. And the award goes to Daniel Burstrom, Big Papa and the Time Machine. Congratulations, Daniel. I'm so glad you could join us this evening, and we'd love to have you say a few words. That, that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I'm shocked. I really, I really am. The, what my papa taught me and what I've learned is that love is very hard. And taking time for people trying to understand someone else that's different than you, trying to walk a mile in their shoes, reaching out when you don't understand. Those are all hard things. And especially in this time when Minnesota has been torn by riots, um, a terrible, terrible death of George Floyd, a pandemic, we're in desperate need of love, but we need to acknowledge that it's going to take vulnerability and, and courage, mm -hmm. bravery to do that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for those words. Thank you for your wonderful book and many congratulations again. So now we will move on to the award for young adult literature, a category sponsored by United Educators Credit Union and presented by community builder and organizer, advocate and social activist, Amaya Zafar. Hi, my name is Amaya, and I'm really excited to be here with you this evening to present the finalists for the young adult literature category sponsored by United Educators Credit Union. Reading has always been like living for me. When I read a book about an adventure or a mystery or any type of experience, I become so immersed in it that it's like I'm really living it. It becomes not only an outlet for me, but genuinely like a break from the busy world around. I love all books that will make it difficult to put them down, like make me ask questions or give me experiences and perspectives I've never had. 
The finalists this year all really speak to me, featuring young women who are trying to find their voices, find their feet, and find family, sometimes quite literally. The books look at the importance of friendship and take on challenges that have stayed remarkably the same over the course of 100 years. The finalists for the young adult literature are My Eyes Are Up Here by Laura Zimmerman, published by Dutton Books for Young Readers, Penguin Random House. Unscripted by Nicole Kronzer, published by Amulet Books Abrams. Where We Are by Allison McGee, published by Athenaeum, Kate and Zlawi Books, Simon and & Schuster. And The Wits and Daughters by Carrie Miss Robian, published by Dutton Books for Young Readers, Penguin Random House. The award for young adult literature goes to Laura Zimmerman's My Eyes Are Up Here. We've got Laura here, welcome and congratulations. The audience would love it if you're able to say a few words. Um, hi, am I here? Yes, you are, congratulations. Hi, thank you so much. I'm uh, surprised and delighted and a little bit daunted. So I just wanna say thank you so much. Thanks to the Friends and the Book Awards for really elevating a community of um, Minnesota writing and reading and I mean, it's just a super great thing to even be on the shelf with Carrie Misrobian and Nicole Kronzer and Alison McGee, all of whom are fantastic. And, um, and so that's great. And thanks to my editor who is somewhere watching in a tie, which apparently we were supposed to dress up. Um, <laughs> and my agent who's not a Minnesotan, but I'm gonna give her credit anyway. Um, I do have one thing I just wanna say um, to like every single person who published a book during a pandemic during the last year or who even just wrote a book or released an album or painted a mural or um, or created a dance or a song in the last year, I just wanna say thank you. Because um, while the whole rest of the world was falling apart, you were building, um, you were still building. So thank you, thank you very much, this is great, thank you. You are most welcome and thank you so much for your work. Congratulations again to Laura Zimmerman. So our next award is for Genre Fiction, sponsored by McAllister College. This category is presented by Bob Dubro, co-owner of Zenith Bookstore in Duluth. Hi, my name is Bob Dubro, and I, along with my wife Angel, are the owners of Zenith Bookstore in Duluth. Our bookstore is nearing its fourth anniversary and we are thrilled to be here with you this evening to present the finalists for Genre Fiction, sponsored by McAllister College. What a year this has been and what has gotten many of us through this pandemic has been good books. Books that take our minds off the day-to-day -day stresses and pain, that let us forget ourselves and escape into other worlds and other lives. And that is exactly what good genre fiction does. The finalists for genre fiction are The Deep, Deep Snow by Brian Freeman, published by Blackstone Publishing, From the Grave by David Housewright, published by Minotaur Books, Macmillan Publishers, Get Idiota by Nate Granzo, and Things We Didn't Say by Amy Lynn Green, published by Bethany House Publishers. And the award goes to Brian Freeman, The Deep, Deep Snow. Congratulations, Brian. I hope that you're here to share a few words with us. I, I am, can you hear me? <laughs> I can, I can, yes, welcome. 
Well, uh, this is wonderful. I'm 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 truly overwhelmed. This is uh, uh, this is such a this is such a great moment, and and you know I'm I'm so grateful to all the librarians in the state and and to the friends. Uh, well, the, the deep deep snow is such a is such a special book to me. It, it's it's a mystery, but you know it, it's not about violence. It's it's not about depravity. It's really about the frailties that, that, that make us all human and, and bring us together. And, and I think that is so important this year. Uh, every writer knows that there are so many people that are responsible for uh, bringing every book to life, not just the author. And uh, I just wanna thank a few folks, uh, Steve Feldberg and the amazing team at Audible who originally brought this book to life uh, as an audio book. Uh, January Lavoie, who did such an amazing emotional job uh, with the narration, uh, uh, all of the incredible people at Blackstone uh, who have been behind this book uh, from the very beginning. I'm so grateful to them. My agents, Deborah Schneider and Alice Lutens, uh, and and most important of all, uh, my wife Marcia. Uh, she has she's been my partner in life all the way back to when we met when I was uh, when I was 18 years <laughs> old, and uh, she has been at my side through all of the the ups and downs of the the crazy book business. Uh, everything I do. Uh, I do for her. So to, to all of them and to all of you, thank you so much. Thank you, Brian, for your work and so many congratulations again. So we have only just begun to honor a wonderful range of writers this evening with more to come. But the strength of this program extends well beyond the awards ceremony. Now we'd like to ask for your help in supporting the Minnesota Book Awards and other programs created by the Friends. The Friends is the Center for the Book in Minnesota, designated by the Library of Congress, which means that we are charged with promoting books, reading, and libraries throughout our state. Producing the Minnesota Book Awards is one way we fulfill that role. And here to speak to the impact of these programs is an acclaimed member of the writing community, a professor, Center for the Book committee member, and all around amazing human being, Duchess Harris. Hello, my name is Duchess Harris, and I am an author and a faculty member at McAllister College. As a writer myself, I know how important it is to be connected to a community that values, supports, and recognizes my work. I serve as a trustee on the Friends Board of Directors because I see how effectively they connect our literary community through the Minnesota Book Awards year-round program and their work as the Minnesota Center for the Book. As we celebrate and recognize the accomplishments of our extraordinary community of writers this evening, I hope you'll join me and support the work of the Friends so that the Minnesota Book Awards program, the Moving Words Statewide Writers Tour, the Minnesota Writers Directory, and all of their programs can continue to lift up the wonderful, diverse, and complex stories of our state. I believe in supporting this program because stories can connect us in a time when we still can't be fully together, and how stories can help us better understand each other, which is especially critical right now. The easiest way to donate tonight is to text the amount that you want to give to 651-412-3277. That's 651-412-3277. Simply follow the instructions for one-time registration and payment information, and you're done. There's also a link on your screen in the comments. We promise this is quick, and you can do it while watching the next award. Thank you for your generosity. Thank Hello. Thank you so much, Duchess. And thank you to everyone who's already supported this program through your donations and through your presence tonight. If you have not yet made a gift and would like to, again, you can text the amount you want to give to 651 412-3277. That number is on your screen. Thank you all so very much for your support. So now we can move on to the award for middle grade literature sponsored by Education Minnesota. And I'm very excited to welcome a pair of young readers as our guest MCs, Graham Nelson and Celia Smith. Hi, my name is Graham Nelson, and I'm a seventh grader at Great River School in St. Paul. I am Celia Smith, a fifth grader at Fergus Falls Public School, and I love visiting the Fergus Falls Public Library. We're really excited to be here with you this evening to present the finalists for middle grade literature category 
sponsored by Education Minnesota. I enjoy reading because having a book in your hands is almost like carrying your own little world that you can bring everywhere with you. This year's finalists really stood out to me from the book covers to the Magian Choices storylines. I'm currently reading What If a Fish by Annika Fajardo. I'm very honored to be here in St. Paul for the Minnesota Book Awards. I enjoy reading because it immerses me in another world. You can live in another character's shoes and learn about worlds other than your own. I think all of these year's nominees have incredible stories to tell. I hope you're as excited about these books as I am. The finalists for middle grade literature are Catstronauts, Digital Disaster by Drew Brockington, published by Little Brown and Company, Hashit Book Group. The Littlest Voyager by Margie Preuss, illustrated by Cheryl Pilgrim, published by Margaret Ferguson Books, Penguin Random House. Lukezilla Beats the Game by Curtis Galetta, illustrated by David Sassella, published by Capstone Editions. And What If a Fish by Annika Fajardo, published by Simon & Schuster. The, the award for, for the middle, middle grade, grade literature, literature goes, goes to, to Annika Fajardo, What If a Fish. I'm so happy you could join us, Annika. Congratulations. The audience would love to hear a few remarks from you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I am so excited. I kind of can't even believe it. Um, I am just really grateful to everyone who has helped both bring What If a Fish to life, my editor, Amanda Ramirez at Simon & Schuster, my amazing agent, and also really just like the whole literary community here in the Twin Cities and in Minnesota, it's such an amazing place to be a writer. Um, and it's such an place, amazing place to be a reader too. And so thank you so much um, to the judges and to the whole Minnesota Book Awards folks. I know that they work really hard. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited and congratulations to my fellow finalists also. You guys all wrote amazing books and um, yeah, thank you. Next, we have a category that delves into Minnesota history and people, and is also the first time we have a category that is named in honor of someone. The Emily Buckwald Award for Minnesota Nonfiction is sponsored by Bookmobile and will be presented by its namesake, the co-founder and former publisher of Milkweed Editions. We're so pleased that this category will carry the name of someone who's had made such a mark on the Minnesota literary community. Emily has worked as an editor, poet, teacher, and award-winning children's author. She's currently the publisher of The Griffin Press and has been honored with the McKnight Distinguished Artist Award, the Kay Sexton Award, and the Yvonne Sandroff Lifetime Achievement Award given by the National Book Critics Circle. Hello, my name is Emily Buckwald. I'm a publisher and author from Minneapolis. I'm happy to be with you this evening to present the finalists for the award for Minnesota nonfiction category sponsored by Bookmobile. As someone who has been privileged to publish a number of Minnesota's nonfiction authors, I take great pleasure in saying how much I enjoyed reading the work of this year's finalists. All of the finalists this year are biographies of Minnesotans, detailed, vibrant portraits of an architect, an Anglo-Dakota woman, a geologist, and patriotic women who served in World War II. The authors have been meticulous in their research of time and place bringing their subjects to vivid life for readers. The finalists for the Minnesota Nonfiction Award are Daybreak Woman, An Anglo-Dakota Life 
by Jane Lamb Harrell, published by Minnesota Historical Society Press. Elizabeth Shue Close, A Life in Modern Architecture by Jane King Hessian, published by University of Minnesota Press. Minnesota's Geologist, The Life of Newton Horace Winchell by Sue Leaf, published by University of Minnesota Press. And A Woman's War II, Women at Work During World War II by Virginia Wright Peterson, published by Minnesota Historical Society Press. The award goes to Sue Leaf, Minnesota's geologist, the life of Newton Horace Winchell. Welcome, Sue, and congratulations. We'd love to hear a few thoughts from you. Um, do you have my video? I don't have your video yet, but we can hear you, so definitely. The oh, there you are. Welcome. <laughs> well, I am flabbergasted, so I didn't even prepare anything to say. I just, want, <laughs> I just want to make sure, though, that people know, as someone else said, that a book is um, I might have written the book, but the University of Minnesota Press made it a great book. And I'd like to thank all the people at the press, including the great designers and my editors, for um, making this book a winner. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you, Sue. And congratulations again. Now let's dive into general nonfiction, a category presented by Roxanne Battle. We're so thrilled to have previous MC Roxanne back with the Book Awards. She's the author of Pockets of Joy, has been an Emmy-nominated television news anchor, and is now Vice President of Advocacy and Community at San Velo Health. Hello, I'm Roxanne Battle, a native of St. Paul, Minnesota, now living in Minneapolis. And I'm so glad to be with you, even virtually. I have great memories of emceeing the Minnesota Book Awards back in 2019, when we could all gather face to face, hug, laugh, chat, and celebrate our collective love of books. As I said back then, I'm the little girl who fell asleep with books in her bed. And my lifelong love of reading led me to writing my own nonfiction book, Pockets of Joy, which led to the work I'm doing now in the mental health care space. You know, it's funny how storytelling just leads to more storytelling. I'm so pleased and honored to present the finalist for general nonfiction, and what an impressive variety of work. Only in general nonfiction can you have a cookbook with 100 different cookie recipes tempting our sweet tooth with mouthwatering ingredients like lemon, lavender, coffee, and cocoa. Next to an impassioned argument for saving indigenous languages in the name of cultural preservation, side by side with a rich and impassioned tribute to a singular focus, the adventures and conservation of the world's largest owl. And rounding out this category, a timely, in-depth analysis of how socioeconomic, cultural, and political systems and structures shaped black life in America. As a lifelong learner, you can see why I love nonfictionism. Sure, you do as well. The finalists for general nonfiction are 100 Cookies, the baking book for every kitchen with classic cookies, novel treats, brownies, bars, and more by Sarah Kiefer, published by Chronicle Books. How the Streets Were Made, Housing Segregation and Black Life in America by Elena Bailey, published by University of North Carolina Press. The Language Warriors Manifesto, How to Keep Our Language Alive No Matter the Odds, by Anton Troyer, published by Minnesota Historical Society Press. 
and Owls of the Eastern Ice, a quest to find and save the world's largest owl by Jonathan C. Slatt, published by Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux Macmillan Publishers. And the award goes to Jonathan C. Slatt, Owls of the Eastern Ice, a quest to find and save the world's largest owl. Congratulations, Jonathan. We'd love to have you say a few words. Yeah, sure. Hi. And, and geez, I wonder, wonder what that music was meant to represent. Um, <laughs> so first of all, thank you uh, very much to uh, other, my, the other finalists, uh, Anton, Elaine, and Sarah, for, for their books. And of course, to the friends of the St. Paul Library for, for picking mine. Um, and then also, you know, uh, there's a couple of booksellers in town that have, have really kind of helped me promote this book, uh, Moon Palace Books in Minneapolis, um, the, uh, uh, the Museum of Russian Art, their bookstore has been help, helping really promote this. I, I did an event at Major than Quinn a few weeks ago, or maybe last week. And then a few people. Um, uh, Pamela Espeland of Min Post has been really helpful at kind of promoting when, when, book, when books are coming out, where I'm talking. And then finally to, to Lori Herzl at the, at the Star Tribune, who wrote a really flattering review of this book. And then also has given me some really good advice on um, kind of how, how to navigate these waters as a, as a new author. So. Um, so thanks, thanks for everyone who um, read the book and liked it. Great. Well, thank you very much for this incredible story. Congratulations again to Jonathan C. Slatt. So in addition to honoring the writers and illustrators for their tremendous work, this evening we also celebrate those who've helped create and improve our literary ecosystem. Next is a special award bestowed on an individual or organization for outstanding contributions to Minnesota's literary community, named for Kay Sexton, a career bookseller and dedicated arts advocate. The award is sponsored by St. Catherine University, and this year's recipient is Alex Pate. Let's take a brief look at his exceptional literary life in this short video, and then hear from the man himself. During the early 1990s, Alex Pay curated an important performance series at Intermedia Arts, which featured local artists like myself and national artists like Essex Hempel, Arthur Jaffa, and Greg Tate. Indeed, I wouldn't have entered the field of performance art without the encouragement and opportunity Alex provided. His curation was particularly important and necessary during this period when many artists of color felt shut out of local arts organizations. Beyond this, Alex's writing, such as his novels Amistad and Finding Makeba, his thinking and teaching, such as his course on hip-hop at the University of Minnesota and his program for educators, The Innocent Classroom, has inspired so many artists, activists, and educators here, and has shaped both the Minnesota and national dialogues on race. His influence is, and has been, essential. Around the mid-1980s, I met Alex D. Pate after hearing him read his poems at a small venue in Minneapolis. After hearing him recite in preparation for falling I felt we were kindred spirits. In the 1980s, the Twin Cities was such a challenging world for black writers. He and I were among a tiny group of black writers working hard to establish our place on the white literary landscape. He worked steadily and strategically over the years to construct a pan-American highway for us so we could travel along the white literary terrain of the Twin Cities. Since the 1980s when I met him and we formed the first mentoring program for black writers in the state of Minnesota, he has not only written award-winning books, but has been the ultimate mentor. His teaching doesn't stop when the door to the classroom closes. He continues to shepherd writers, taking the time to listen and guide them, 
and by bringing them face to face with other successful black authors like he did with the Givens Nomo program. His current venture, The Innocent Classroom, is another prime example of the depth of his brilliance and his desire to raise young black children up by engaging teachers to help close the relationship gap between educators and students of color. Alex, my dear friend, I am so happy for you. This award is such an honor. I'm, I'm humbled by it. And this past year uh, was one engulfed in grief and sadness, the pandemic, the murder of George Floyd and the uprisings that flowed from that, the murder of Dante Wright, so much passing on. But we are meant to rise and I rise now to say thanks. Thank you for this award. There are too many people to thank by name in my minute, but I have to try still. This is such an incomplete list. Thank you, David Murrah, my brother, and your powerful family, and your wife, Susan Sensor. Thank you so much. I feel a part of your family. Thank you to Damu, to Rachel, Carolyn, Pamela, Balfi, David Grant, Archie Givens, and his family. Ralph, Arlita, Sujen, my children, Sela, Gianni, and Alex, Jess, Matthew, and everyone connected to Innocent Technologies and the Innocent Classroom, the friends of the St. Paul Public Libraries, The Loft, Ann Regan, the late Alan Kornblum, and the late great J. Otis Powell. Time is a wondrous thing, really. As it passes in our active lives, things accumulate. Ideas and feelings deepen. And eventually, I suppose, if you are lucky, the people who can see you have seen your contribution say thanks. And all you can do then is say back to them, to you, as I say now, thank you for seeing me. And stay tuned for more. Thank you so much for all you have done and will do for our community, Alex. For our next award, we have Memoir and Creative Nonfiction, sponsored by Bradshaw Celebration of Life Centers, with presenter Korsha Hessen, recipient of the 2020 Teacher of the Year Award. Hi, my name is Kosha Hessen, and I'm a fourth grade teacher from Egan. I'm so pleased to be here with you this evening to present the finalists for Memoir and Creative Nonfiction category, sponsored by Bradshaw Celebration of Life Centers. The finalist books are deeply personal and resonant. They evoke emotion and empathy, bravely share lived experiences, and the importance of humanity in storytelling. It takes courage to share one's story, and these books stress that we all have stories to share and deserve to be heard. A good story is like a cup of hot chocolate. It warms you, draws you close, and it creates a place for you to just be. The finalists for memoir and creative nonfiction are Somewhere in the Unknown World by Cal Kalia Yang, published by Metropolitan Books, Macmillan Publishers. Tell Me Your Names and I Will Testify, Essays by Carolyn Holbrook, published by University of Minnesota Press. Unglued, A Bipolar Love Story by Jeffrey Zuckerman, published by Boyle and Dalton and The War Requiem by Kaya Solvay Preuss, published by SA Press. And the award goes to Carolyn Holbrook, Tell Me Your Names and I Will Testify, Essays. for joining us, Carolyn, and congratulations. <laughs> Please share a few words with us. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm just so blown away. I, I just didn't expect that I would win. 
I want to just thank everybody. I want to thank the panel that selected me <laughs> and my awesome editor. <sighs> oh, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. And, um, yeah, you know, I mean, when my book came out, it was like shortly after the pandemic and the George Floyd murder. And who knew that those things would happen when my book came out? It was just so timely. And oh my goodness, just so many thanks to my children and my grandchildren, some of whom are here with me tonight in my house. <laughs> and my long-term writing buddy, Diane Wilson, who's sitting here too, eating chocolate yes. cake. We're enjoying chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Eric, my editor, who just believed in me ever from the first time I, oh, I, I just don't know what to say, but thank you. And I look so weird on that screen. Stop <laughs> it. I just really, really, really want to thank the spirits who guide me, my ancestors whose shoulders I stand on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yay! Woo! All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Carolyn, so much for your moving book and for all you do. So many congratulations. So we have only two awards left. Thank you again for being with us virtually this evening. We're so grateful that you decided to spend time celebrating Minnesota books. Please keep those social comments coming. Maybe share your picture of a toast to the winners. Thanks as well for your generous donations. If you're able to help us and amplify the stories of your fellow Minnesotans, please consider making a donation. You'll join more than 200 donors from Glenwood, Grand Marais, Faribault, and more who are lending their support to make this program possible. Text to give and online donation instructions are in the event description on YouTube. So the penultimate award is for poetry, a category sponsored by Wellington Management with MC Matt Allen, otherwise known as Nur D, a hip hop artist from the Twin Cities who's played at Paisley Park, First Avenue and US Bank Stadium. Hi. I'm your seventh favorite hip hop person, Nerd D, and I am delighted to be here with you this evening to present the finalists for the poetry category sponsored by Wellington Management. Hip hop and poetry are like the identical twins of the art family. More than that, both are connected by a similar desire to express the unexpressible using a jumble of words. Some of our best and brightest hip hop pioneers have been poets themselves. And some of the songs we've been grooving to our whole lives are poems set to intermentals that makes us wanna dance. Still I Rise by Maya Angelou stands side by side with Changes by Tupac Shakur, able to bring us together, looking at two different views of the same struggle. This last year, I've had the honor and privilege of standing with our community out on the streets as they demand and fight for justice and change. And just like the mingling of all these different people from all different walks of life, I have been able to see poetry and hip hop weave back and forth and back again in an amazing and incredible way. Tonight, I am honored to be here presenting you with these works that have done something in this year that is so important, expressing the unexpressible in a bold new way. And the finalists for poetry are Catrachos by Roy G. Guzman, published by Grey Wolf Press. Feel Puma by Ray Gonzalez, published by University of New Mexico Press. Homie by Danez Smith, published by Grey Wolf Press. And Wound from a Mouth of a Wound by Torin A. Greathouse, published by Milkweed Editions. And the award goes to Danez Smith, homie. Congratulations, Denez. We'd love for you to say a few words. Woo! 
<laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm like still stunned um, and I'm sweating. Um, okay, um, first off, thank you so much. Um, this is my first time being nominated. Um, and this is something that like has always been like a secret little trophy in my head. Um, I want to say, I, sh I, want to, I want to just indeed share this night um, as a win with Torin and Ray and Roy. Um, Minnesota poets, um, both storied and newer to Minnesota that I am so happy to write alongside um, in such amazing books, buy all of our books. Um, to my <laughs> Grey Wolf team, um, Jeff, Chance, uh, Caroline, Marissa, Katie, Matan, Elizabeth, even though you don't work there no more, hey girl, uh, Morgan, Annie, Casey, Steve, anybody I've missed, uh, charge it to my heart and not to my head, or my head and not to my heart. Thank you. It has always been an honor and a dream to be a Grey Wolf poet, um, and I carry that so well. Uh, I, I don't carry that so well, but I carry, I carry it in my little well in my heart. I don't know. I'm bad with words. Sorry. Okay, I'll just start reading people. Okay, thank you, Blair, Josh, Hugh, Tish, um, Kamia, Krista, D. Allen. Thank you, Cam, Sam, Franny, all of Dark Noise. Thank you to young Minnesota poets. Thank you, Dante. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Shava. Thank you to Jan Mandel in the Black Box. Thank you to Marion McClinton. May you rest in peace. Thank you, Shay Cage, E.G. Bailey. Thank you, Eve. Thank you, Desdemona, Black Pearl, everybody from the Blue Nile. Thank you, um, Balfi. Thank you, Edge of Poetic Entertainment. Thank you, um, and much, much love. You call my mother on her birthday to T. Michael Rambo. Thank you, Dudley <laughs> Boyd um, and Melissa Borgman for building a ship that was the first thing that brought me and some young poets together. Thank you to the Golden Time Cafe. Uh, all y'all go get your coffee there. They have an amazing breakfast. Thank you to Brooming House Barbershop on Selby and uh, uh, Ann on Dale. Go to either one, get your hair cut. Thank you to the Jimmy Lee Community Center. Thank you to the community, uh, to the Capri Theater. Thank you once again to the Blue Nile. May you rest in peace. You were an amazing location to be a young Minnesota poet. Um, thank you to this state, to this city. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave Merrill, who just texted me. What up, Dave? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for your powerful collection and your words, Denez. Congratulations. So our final award of the evening, we've arrived. It is Novel and Short Story. It's a category sponsored by the College of St. Benedict, St. John's University, and is presented by Jeff Kamen, creator and moderator of Books and Bars, now in its 17th year. Hi, my name is Jeff Kamen, and I live in Minneapolis. I produce Minnesota's biggest open book club, Books and Bars. I am so happy to be here with you this evening to present the finalists for the Novel and Short Story category, sponsored by the College of St. Benedict, St. John's University. Novels are the bread and butter of a book club. Novels bring us together to discuss and share our unique perspectives. From impressive debuts by Frederick Sukup and Kavai Strong Washburn, to Louise Erdrich's personal tale, we crave connection and community in our novels now more than ever. Great short stories don't waste a word, delivering maximum message and emotion in concise packages. And in the short stories of Rocky Kopernik, we explore the themes of love and loss, so timely yet timeless. Minnesota readers are a unique and hearty breed. Just the other night, we had an online book club event, and when I tried to wrap it up, we experienced the equivalent of the Minnesota goodbye, in which we continue to discuss books for another half an hour. There's a reason so many talented authors continue to write here. It's where the best readers are. The finalists for novel and short story are Bliss by Frederick Sukup, published by Regal House Publishing. The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich, published by Harper, HarperCollins Publishers. Sharks in the Time of Saviors by Kavai Strong Washburn, published by Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux, Macmillan Publishers. And The Things You Left by Rocky Kopernik, published by Unsolicited Press. And the award goes to Kavai Strong Washburn, Sharks in the Time of Saviors.
Welcome, Kavai, and so many congratulations. Thank you for helping us close out the evening with a few remarks. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, I was not ready for this, and um, going after Denez is is particularly really hard. Denez, you don't you don't know me, but um, I went to a, one of your readings when I first moved to the Twin Cities, and I was like, I'm here. This is it. This is the Twin Cities. I'm a huge fan of their poetry for such a long time and all the other writers that are from the Twin Cities that, that I, I'm just getting to know. We haven't been here too long. And so it's, it's been hard for us to, to move here and to be locked down at the pandemic and to, to witness all the, the things that have happened since, you know, all the other writers have talked about it. So I won't, I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, just real quickly, I'll, I'll thank, you know, right away, I gotta thank my wife, Christina, she has uh, done so much to help me learn how to be a parent and how to love our children, but at the same time, giving me the space to even push me to go and, and write. We would go to libraries on the weekends and the kids would be at story time and she'd be like, go write, go write right now. Go into one of the rooms here in the library and write. And um, my team at uh, MCDN FSG, so that's Sean McDonald and Danny Vasquez, editors there, they did a great job turning the book into what it has become. Sarita Varma, who's the publicist at FSG, who was responsible for really getting the book out there and letting people know what was going on, even in the midst of the pandemic. We had to switch everything up and try to figure out how to talk to people about the book when we couldn't go into bookstores and things like that. Uh, Madeline Day, who's at Picador, and she's the publicist for, for the paperback. And, you know, there's so many other people I wish I had time to thank, but I, I would, I just got to say that I, I love how much the Twin Cities has, has, has welcomed me and made me feel like one of their own, even though I'm a new, you know, I just got here and I'm from the <laughs> islands. It's totally different in Hawaii. It's, we don't get this kind of snow and stuff, uh, but you know, that's, that's all I can think of right now. I wasn't ready whatsoever, <laughs> but thank you so much. This is incredible. Well, thank you very much. And congratulations again. We love the library story too. Thank so you. congratulations to everyone, to tonight's winners and finalists for their remarkable work and for sharing their stories with us. We hope you'll continue the celebration at the epilogue after party. It's sponsored by Alaris and Brainfuse and hosted by Jeff Kamen. This year, the post party is in Zoom and you can virtually mingle with your fellow attendees and authors. That link is up on the screen and in the chat. Thank you again to our presenting sponsor, Education Minnesota. We'd like to extend thanks to our local independent bookseller for the book awards, Red Balloon Bookshop. Please visit their online store to buy the books by the authors honored tonight. That link is in the event description and in the chat. Thank you so much to the Willie August Project, Ben Seams on guitar, Jeremy Hauer on drums, and Graydon Peterson, upright bass. Find out more about their work at www.benseamsmusic.com. Many thanks again to all our wonderful guest MCs and videographer Slade Kemet. We're very grateful to our partners at the St. Paul Public Library, always, and especially this time, the Highland Park Library staff and supervisor Mary Knox for providing a filming location. Thank you to Kate Deanhart, chair, and all members of the Center for the Book Committee for their guidance and dedication. Let me also recognize the full staff of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library and the judges, panelists, and other volunteers, as well as all our financial supporters. Captioning tonight was provided by Lisa Richardson. Finally, we have a huge thank you again to the team at SPNN, especially Steve Brunsberg, also Deborah Thiel, John Robinson, Jackie Maddox, and Dave Carlson for helping to get tonight's event into your homes yet again. And really, really finally, thanks again to all of you for being part of the 33rd Annual Minnesota Book Awards. Good night and good reading. Thank you.